ChatGPT is out in the wild, but Google Bard has entered the race. Let's see how they compare. Welcome to today's video where I'll be comparing Google Bard with ChatGPT. Yes, that's the scripted output that came from GPT. I asked it to generate a video for me today, but it didn't quite hit it. I have been using GPT to generate some of my video summaries, which I then use as a prompt for me to record a fuller version of a video. But today's video is a little bit special because I've only just got access to Bard. And while GPT is certainly useful, I'm gonna be doing a few live demos. And so I've got to throw out the rule book. Formulate is not gonna work here and we're gonna to have to make it up from scratch. If you're new around here, welcome. My name is Pete Moriarty. I help small business owners get their tech right. And we have only just got our hands on Google Bard because we live in Australia and our business doesn't have access to it. Yet again, Google are letting their competitors get ahead of them in the race by only rolling out features and functionality in stages. Now, Google have released Bard initially just for Gmail. They're finally saying as of today that they are announcing it for Google Workspace as well. However, us down under are still stuck without access. And so just like many of Google's other features, whether we see it or not, who knows, but at least it's gonna be delayed. And unfortunately, that means that I'm getting my hands on Bart for the very first time as I create this video. Now for me to get access to it, I wasn't able to even sign up with my Workspace account even after enabling it in the admin panel. My team had to sign up for a dummy Gmail account, pretend we were based in the United States and get access to it that way. So that's how I'm gonna be accessing Bard to make this video. Now I've been using GPT for a number of months now. It's pretty much become my default search engine. I didn't see what the big hoo-ha was when I first logged in after I first started using it. Yes, it was certainly useful, but it was nothing that different than what I'd seen on Twitter and other spaces. But I found that the ability to ask GPT questions that I would normally ask my assistant or I would normally ask someone on my team to research for me, or I would normally ask Google and end up searching and researching myself has really made it quite compelling. And I found myself going to GPT as my default search engine to find information and also just help me get my work done. Now in my workplace, primarily my job is to create videos for YouTube. And so I've been using GPT to help me create video scripts and summaries. And what that's allowed me to do is cut down on the time that I would normally spend writing a video or coming up with bullet points. Sometimes GPT has given me pretty good results and other times I've had to completely throw it out and start from scratch. But one of the things that I do like is most of the time GPT will give me a pretty well-rounded idea and I can just fill in the blanks. Sometimes GPT will even give me suggestions that I hadn't thought of and I really like that as well so I can make sure that my videos are complete for you, my audience. Let's go ahead and load up Bard. And we're in, I finally have access to Bard. So to really give you an idea of Bard's capabilities, I wanna give it the same prompts I've been giving GPT and see what the results are, because I know which prompts have been useful and which ones have not been so useful, and I wanna see how they compare. First up, we may as well start for the prompt to this video. This is one that I threw in here this morning. As I said, I wasn't very happy with the results, but I'd like to see what Bard thinks of this. Here was GPT's response. And here's Bard. So this is really interesting. There's a couple of quite interesting things about this response. Number one is, I don't know if this is bias on Google's part, but Google certainly seems to favor Bard over GPT. It does raise the point that Google has access to real-time information on the web, which GPT failed to mention that. Bard also says that both of them are easy to use. However, Bard is claiming that it is generally considered to be more user-friendly than GBT because Google's answers are more readable and formatted in a more consistent way. I'm yet to see how that claim goes. Now, Google says that Bard is currently only available in beta and pricing has not yet been released, whereas GBT pretty confidently said that it was available on a tiered pricing model on Google Cloud. Now, personally, I haven't heard of it being made available on Google Cloud. I assume that well, there will be an API of some sort and that will have availability, but that's not really sounding like they're giving consistent answers there. So let's find out what the real truth is. I'm gonna log in to my trusty Google, and it looks here that, interestingly, Google triggers an AI chatbot on Bard. UBS estimates Alphabet will incur a 0.3 cent to 3 cent in incremental costs on top of its bait search query, but that's not a public price, that's Google's priced. Interestingly, I can't find any pricing information for Bard. I haven't looked too hard, 
but I'd like to move on. Okay, next up, I asked GPT for a definition on mid-market companies in Australia. Let's see what Bard comes up with. Now, GPT gave a pretty good answer to this, and I've got to say that Bard's answer is pretty good as well. Bard gave a more comprehensive explanation of where it got its data sources for, and I really liked that because it gave me a little bit of extra, you know, guidance and I guess the confidence that it was a well-structured answer based on information that was readily available. But uh, what it also did was it gave me a little bit more of an explanation of how I should be careful on the data to rely on because it wasn't really clear on its answer. I do like that, and that's really Google showing that, hey, I found the answer or what I think is the answer, but you may not be able to trust this 100%, so tread carefully. Damn. Google have done really well here. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. I didn't ask it to put it in a table, but Google has automatically created a visual guide on how to compare these two machines. Now, I actually found it challenging when I first Googled this inside GPT earlier today because I had to read through and kind of like understand all of the information myself, whereas Google has made it really obvious. One is faster, one is slower. One is longer, one is shorter on range. You have clear differentiation in costs, and although there's not much explanation around it, Google's made it pretty easy to compare the two. I guess once I've asked it for the difference between, it's automatically gone into comparison mode and it's decided to be as helpful as possible by creating a comparison table. Now, one thing that was missing here, I guess was a bit more of an explanation of what, what are the flight differences between the two? And if a gyrocopter isn't powered by an engine, what's it actually powered by? Is it just magically powered by the wind? Let's ask Google a bit more information and see what it says. Okay, that's a pretty sufficient explanation. And to be honest, the first time that I asked GPT this today, I didn't really understand what was powering it. And I just ended up feeling a little bit more confused, even more so than when I first asked the question. Google's given me an explanation that I now actually understand. And so armed with this information, I want to go back to GPT and see if it can help me explain how a gyrocopter actually works. Now, one challenge I'm finding with GPT right now is it is so darn slow. I don't know if it's just today, but GPT-4 has taken a long time to generate responses for me, and that's been extremely challenging. Something that I definitely trust Google with is to have a excellent backend infrastructure that built everything they do on top of Google Cloud, and they have the ability to scale very, very quickly. And so I do know that even fresh products from Google tend to be able to scale up quite quickly because they're always built on Google's cloud platform. And even after I've finished telling you that, the response is still being generated inside GPT-4. Let's wait a little bit longer. Well, it's only taken a minute, but I finally got my answer from GPT. That was really not impressive at all. It's pretty darn slow. I, although I did get the right answer and it did kind of make sense. Again, it's just giving me text after text after text, something that Google has done a pretty good job of being better at so far. Time for our next question. So this one's interesting. I actually have to give the answer to GPT. GPT's response was specific. It was accurate to my knowledge. And Google's was a little more wishy-washy. It didn't really give me a clear understanding in answering my question. It was really more just giving me generalized information. I can understand that Google probably want to stay on the default side of being accurate rather than being as comprehensive as possible in their answer. But Google kind of lacked the confidence that I was looking for in the answer that I sought. Also, I thought that Google didn't structure the answer very well. GPT was very clear and specific in answering each part of my question. I asked about one tree in Portugal and I asked about one tree in Morocco and I was able to clearly identify the answer for both of those. Google didn't do such a good job with two different questions in one statement. So here's one that I'm hoping will be a bit more of a challenge. I asked a three-part question about drone laws in Morocco and I'm gonna give Google the same challenge. Okay, so the first question is not too bad, but I've gotta say that Bard has done a pretty good job here of answering pretty much all the information I would like. I'm still interested in some specifics, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask my follow-up questions. Now, this is interesting. They've actually used different examples of people who've gotten in trouble. GPT mentioned a French tourist in 2019 in Casablanca, Google have gone still in 2019, but a British tourist in Marrakesh. I'm curious to know which one of those are actually accurate and whether or not either of them happened. I'm inclined to trust Google more on this. Let's fact check GPT. So that's interesting. My first search result has brought up a 27 year old French tourist in 2019 in Myanmar not in Morocco. Strangely, I can't find any evidence of this actually happening. Maybe I'm using the wrong search terms or maybe this has disappeared from the internet, but this is getting a little bit fishy. Now, my final test here is to ask a follow-up question about the specifics of what's been shared with me and to see if they can both answer. Now, GPT did a pretty good job of this. Let's see what Bard's response is. Now, I'm not sure if this is because of the age of the information, 
I don't know if maybe things have changed in the last couple of years, but these are wildly different. I'm not sure what the right answer is, but again, I'm just inclined to emotionally trust Google because they tend to be more accurate on things. And they've said from the beginning that the aim of BARD is maybe not to be as helpful as GPT, but at least to always be accurate. I'm gonna have my team research the specifics of these and see whether or not they were actually correct. Now, here's an interesting one. I asked this post question to GPT twice and I got different answers each time. I don't know if it was because the formatting was slightly different or if it just understood the question differently on a different day. Sometimes it does give different results from time to time, but I'm curious to see what kind of answer Google gives us because I got very different answers from GPT in the two different times that I asked what I thought was the same question. Now, this one's a bit of a challenge. I really like the answer that Google has given. They've given me the technical details and they've actually given me what I really wanted from this question was to explain not only the different ranges, but also the different variants within those ranges of different Porsches. However, the answer that I got from GPT was also useful. What I liked about that answer was it actually told me what the different vehicles are known for. And I assume it's scraping forums and discussions on the internet and bringing together a collection of information to bring that together. I assume Google is looking more at technical documents and trying to make sense of technical information for it to then share it with me. Google has something called the knowledge graph, which it uses when it crawls websites and it looks for different types of data. And I'm assuming that Google is relying on some of these tools to generate its response. Now I've got to test it. Let's see if Google gives me a different answer if I actually name this correctly. Interestingly, Google just gave me the same answer, but this time it decided to give me a table with the information as well. That's really curious. I didn't ask it to do anything differently, but I guess somewhere in its brain it's decided this is how I'm going to outlay the information. Again, with these AI tools, there isn't really a clear answer as to what's going on in their mind when they present the information, but sometimes an extra prompt, another question, or just trying again can yield you the results that you're after. Now, here's an interesting question, and this one is more of a social question. I'm curious to see how these go because GPT had trouble with this one given its cutoff of data is in 2021 but I'd like to know what Google thinks. Now, keep in mind here, I'm deliberately not giving these systems much information. I'm kind of wanting them to fail and I'm wanting them to ask me for more information or I'm wanting them to force me to feed it more information just to see how well they go completely out of the gate, unprompted or not fully prompted. And then bit by bit, I'm feeding bits of information to the algorithm so they can get better and better with their answers. But ideally, I want as much of the work possible to be done by these apps, so it's not me having to do the thinking. I would dream of where I can just kind of think something, give a couple of words to an AI, and it will automatically guess what I'm thinking and give me the answer. And that's what I'm trying to aim for here. Even less than telling somebody else as a human what I need or what I want to know. Now, Google gives an interesting answer here, which is actually wrong. And before I loop back to that, let's try the second question and we'll come back to that one. This one had a spelling mistake and I'm gonna leave that one in and see how it goes. Now. This response is really confusing. There was a typo and I think Google think I'm asking if it's okay to walk in front of a car, but the answer seems to be about riding in the front of a car. I, I don't quite understand what the answer is here. And you know, I can see that it's talking about some of the social challenges and social norms in Morocco, but I don't really understand what it's thinking about. This doesn't really make grammatical sense to me. I mean, it's perfectly acceptable to walk in front of a car. However, as a woman, you're not obligated to do so. Who says ever who should walk in front of a car? This just seems completely odd to me. I don't know what's going on here. And I don't know if Bard are like too busy trying to give a socially acceptable and politically acceptable answer that it's missed out that there was a clear typo in this question. Now, Bard has given me the same answer when I've put in the right question with the correct spelling, but it's still a bit of a confusing answer. If you're a man visiting Morocco, it's perfectly acceptable to ride in the front of a car. However, if you're a woman, you're not obligated to do so. I didn't ask if anyone was obligated to ride in the front of a car. I didn't ask if women were obligated to ride in the front of a car, right? I only asked about men. It's up to you to decide what you feel comfortable with. Yeah, that's certainly interesting. Now, Here's the real answer to this question, because I asked a couple of the rideshare drivers why they kept asking myself to sit in the front of the car and my girlfriend to sit in the back. And what they actually said to me after a little bit of translation was that the rideshare app that I was using here in Morocco is not quite legal yet with the government. And so in order to not have any undue attention drawn to them, they wanted to have at least somebody sitting in the front seat and somebody sitting in the back seat. So it wasn't confusing 
and no police basically saw that they were potentially part of a rideshare operation. Now let's see how Bard goes creating emails. It's been criticized that it's not as creative or not as inventive as GPT for creating new content, and I'd like to test it out. Now GPT did very well here. Not only did it create an email, but it also gave a script of what a collaboration might look like. It even gave some dot points on a partnership outline, and it even gave a recommendation area and a list of testimonials as well. I was really impressed with this as a response and it was completely flushed out. Google's effort, not so bad. I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't quite as well flushed out as GPT. I really thought that GPT gave it the extra color it needed for you to be able to go in, cut paste, make a few quick changes if you actually wanted to send this, and then poof, off it goes from your inbox. I'm gonna ask Google to improve it and see how it goes. Google doesn't seem to be getting it. I want to create an email script and I want the two to be combined together, but it just keeps kind of like missing the mark. It's not a bad effort and I'm liking the responses that Google's giving me. It wouldn't be hard to fix its work and cut and paste and put it together, but GPT nailed this in one prompt, which I love. So that's a wrap. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. I've got to say Google have done a pretty darn impressive job at creating something that accepts the natural language and gives me really clear answers back. Some of the answers that Google generated were better answers than GPT, and I've got to say there is an emotional trust in Google to give me accurate answers. I was able to verify everything that Google actually had in the answers that it gave me, and I liked that. But GPT had that extra creative edge where it had a bit more flair in the answers that it gave, I guess on account of it's a bit more loose with the truth, let's say. And so the interesting thing is going to be where these two tools end up. You may have noticed I'm using a tool called AI PRM, which is a plugin for Chrome, which adds extra features to GPT. This gives really, really great prompts that you can automatically add into your questions, and that gives you much better answers. Now, I didn't use any of those helpful prompts with my GPT this time for this video because I wanted to give you the raw experience, so we were comparing apples to apples, but they really helped me to enhance my questions, and they helped me get much more out of the software. Now, Google, I'm yet to see any additional plugins to help you with prompt writing, but overall, learning to write great prompts and learning to ask great questions of these tools will help you to get better results. Let me know what you'd like me to test next, and if you'd like to hear more, stick around for the channel. We've got plenty of other videos on helping you with everything tech in your small business. Oh, I'm still waiting for that gyrocopter question to be answered. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.